Dubai is home to the largest shopping mall in the world, over 1,200 shops dedicated to offering both high-end and high-street fashion brands, accessories and lifestyle products. But many would say that Dubai is well on its way to becoming the fashion capital of consumerism rather than production, with so much of the same on offer. Introducing the Cartel, a unique retail space definitely worth keeping an eye on as the creators walk to their own beat and set their own fashion trends. We speak with one of the founders, May Barber, on how the Cartel is changing Dubai's fashion landscape one original piece at a time. The cartel is not your normal retail space. To begin with, it's not located in a mall. This alone has already set it apart from the many shopping destinations spread across Dubai. But in a city which embraces change and innovation, it wasn't going to be too long before Dubai's fashion scene would be introduced to a fresh new contender. Can you tell us how the concept behind the cartel was first conceived? Uh, the cartel was conceived by my business partner, uh, Peter Rickwise, who is a film director and a fashion photographer. Uh, he had this idea about creating a space that uh, curates designers from all around the world to offer something different to the market. I was involved in the strategic part of the cartel, in addition, of course, to the, to the creative side, because I come from a creative background as well, uh, having been an architect uh, uh, and a writer. And uh, together we worked on establishing a project that aims to become more than a retailer. So this is not just a destination store that, that uh, offers unique offerings in, um, in women's wear, men's wear, lifestyle and, and accessories and beyond, but it's also a platform that offers any talented person from all around the world the chance to showcase their talent and provide something very different to the market. And we provide from our end the strategic alignments that can help boost the business and create the right audience for it. How would you describe fashion in Dubai and how do you think the international community sees the fashion industry in the Emirates? Um, I think the fashion scene in Dubai is definitely evolving. I mean, we've witnessed a very big improvement over the past decade. Uh, from mega shopping malls now, we're talking about uh, some sort of a fashion week that happens twice a year. We've got governmental and semi-governmental initiatives such as Dubai Design District that aims to support designers and, and um, creative people, uh, whether local or regional, which is very interesting. Uh, however, I fear like that there is still this stigma of Dubai being a fashion capital of consumerism rather than of production, uh, which is something that we really need to rectify. And uh, there are a lot of players, obviously, in the dynamics of what makes a fashion scene. So we still need to, to find that balance so we can find or we can uh, arrive at a very healthy ecosystem when it comes to fashion. The cartel is described as a space which embodies a gallery of wearable art. And what strikes you when first entering the showroom are the geometrical units set up which house the individual collections of unique designers from around the globe. Looking to Dubai where there is no shortage of fashion brands, how has the cartel been received so far? Uh, in Dubai, there is definitely a lot of fashion offerings. So in terms of quantity, yes, we do have excess of offerings. But when it comes to quality, we can easily say that we've got two main categories in Dubai, the high street and the high end. Uh, the high street that is massively offered, um, it tends to have um, very low quality and uh, it's mass produced, so there's no originality. When you shop there, you don't feel very individualistic per se because um, it's mass produced and you find it everywhere in the world. On the other end, you have the high-end brands, which are still, let's say, more exclusive, but at the same time, they're not necessarily affordable, so it, they do not reach uh, a big market segment. And then you're left with this gap in between, and this is what the cartel caters for. Uh, the niche target audience that wants to wear something or opt for a piece that's, that's signature, that's exclusive and unique, but at the same time, it's not that expensive. And uh, at the same time, we offer a chance to designers who want to be part of the fashion scene in Dubai, whether coming from Asia or South America or, or Eastern Europe or, or anywhere else in the world, if they want to have, uh, um, if they want to enter the Dubai market, but uh, and they have got something very interesting to offer, the cartel is the platform for them to showcase and, and to be part of the overall scene in Dubai. Now, what criteria are you following when selecting your fashion designers? Uh, the selection of the designer is very important. Uh, we are constantly uh, contacted by designers who want to be part of Cartel. Uh, and the criteria is that they have to offer something very interesting. They have to pay attention to quality. And they have got to have that artistic element 
that can make that piece a wearable art. Uh, whether that could be like a direct application of art on a garment like what I'm wearing today, or it could be a sculptural piece where they actually exercise architectural techniques into making the, the garment somewhat spatial. Or it could be a special sewing technique like what some of our Japanese designers are doing. Many of our designers do not even settle for what's offered in the market when it comes to fabric, for instance. They make their own fabrics. So they have got the full understanding how fashion is made and how a garment can become a wearable art. Uh, many of them showcase in international fashion weeks and um, they have got amazing uh, expertise, great inspirational stories behind what they do. Uh, for instance, we have Rad Hurani, who is the first designer in the world to introduce unisex haute couture which is a very interesting uh, achievement and we've hosted his exhibition in, in the cartel um, it was titled five years of unisex and we also brought a limited edition of his book uh, and we interviewed him for our magazine the cartel biannual magazine so uh, his creations are very interesting he, he does a jacket that could look somewhat monochrome but it, it could be worn as a jacket as a vest or even a bag so is that interesting and is that creative with all the layers that the designer think of when, when constructing the garment? We have another designer, uh, Helen van Ries, who, who is Dutch, and, and Holland seems to be the ultimate destination for avant-garde designers because they really think outside the box and they're pushing the boundaries when it comes to creativity in, uh, in fashion making. She also makes her own signature tweed and uh, creates uh, several beautiful garments that are somewhat feminine and softer than what, uh, what we tend to stock, but the making of them is, is rather uh, architectural and very interesting. I think the location within Asarkal is very interesting for uh, two main reasons. One is the positioning, because then it helps us define ourselves as a gallery of wearable art, you know, setting between uh, several, almost 19 art galleries catering to music, uh, photography, installation arts, paintings, sculptures. So we are then uh, positioned as a gallery offering fashion, but in a very different uh, manner. Uh, the other point is that it's somewhat adding a, an interesting element to, to find us. I mean, we are called the cartel in the end of the day, so it is somewhat an underground movement. It's a bit dodgy, if you like, but it's also interesting because people go through this experience to find us or to locate us. And then once they arrive, they are met with this um, uh, beautiful experience of being exposed to high-end fashion in a very individualistic manner. So it's not, uh, they're not rubbing shoulders with people like shopping in a mall. It, it, it somewhat pays a homage to the standalone boutiques. Much like the designers represented, the cartel consumer, according to May, is confident, intelligent, a risk taker and original. Someone who is willing to take the road less travelled, so to speak, in search for that special piece to highlight their originality. They're smart because they're able to mix and match between high street, high end and that signature cartel piece. So uh, I think that also it's a, this segment of, of society is also increasing because people are now traveling more, they're far more connected, whether on social media or any other platforms that really connects, connects them to what's happening elsewhere in the world. So they're very intelligent and um, aware of everything around them in the world. Finally, how do you see the UAE fashion scene progressing? What still needs to be done? What are the challenges? And in your opinion, do you think that there are enough avenues for emerging fashion designers to really progress and develop here? I think uh, as a whole, we need to look at the system as a whole and revamp it completely. Uh, we cannot uh, make statements like we are fashion capitals without working on the other layers. So we have to focus on education. And when I say education, it's not necessarily the, the fashion institutes that only uh, caters to fashion design, but, but design, as a, it has to be a discipline that's, that, that has to be taught in, in, in the curriculums in schools because we have to encourage creative thinking from the very beginning. Uh, the second point also is that we have to uh, uh, encourage designers to uh, try to be more creative and we have to be a bit critical because I feel like in this part of the world we are somewhat maybe it's a cultural thing we tend to sugarcoat everything so even with editors or with press and, and the way they they look at fashion designers it's good to encourage them but we also have to be very critical because without giving them constructive uh, criticism they will never improve and I do feel like they are they still lack the local designers here still lack um, originality they still lack uh, quality issues they need to control their productions they need to think uh, outside the box and we need to also from a um, macro perspective we need to offer them with uh, the right tools that they need so they cannot settle for the uh, for the fabric offerings for instance if we're talking in fashion design in particular 
uh, many designers shop and for fabrics in the same area, so they end up with uh, designs that, that look somewhat similar. We have to encourage them to make their own prints, and for that they have to have the facilities to make their own prints. So it's, uh, it's all these layers combined that really can, can result in a very interesting dynamics. Well, that brings us to the end of our program. If you would like to know more about any of the stories you have seen tonight, you can contact us at UAE Weekly at city7tv.com or by calling us on 04367 2230. From myself and the entire team, have a great week ahead.